Halloween is here, and an eerie quiet creeps over the land. As the wind howls in the dead of night, you hear something lurking behind you. You turn and see nothing. Are you losing your mind? Slowly and carefully, you walk into your house. You slide the key into the door, and the lock slowly creeps open. You shake off the cold as you flick the switch, and as the light fills the room, your eyes shatter with the most disgusting horror you've ever seen. Your mind is frozen, recoiling in pure shock. Your gaming PC is gone, and in its place, someone left a greasy, Cheeto-stained console. Suddenly, you awake in your bed, breathing heavy, covered in cold sweat. It was all just a dream. Don't let this nightmare become a reality. Build a gaming PC and keep hope alive. All right, guys, let's get right to this build. This is going to be a good one and possibly my most powerful $420 build to date. First up, let's go with an eight-legged monster of a low-budget CPU, the FX 8300. If you're watching this video abroad, this is not a new CPU for you, but here in the States, I've yet to see one of these in person. This is an 8 or octa-core, 4 module, think of it as hardware hyper-threading, socket AM3 Plus processor. It's built on the tried and true yet aging 32 nanometer Vishra architecture. It's got a TDP of around 95 watts, with a base clock of 3.3 gigahertz. But in my research, I've seen these little gems overclock just as high as any 8350. We've got a total of 16 megs of L2 and L3 cache. It may run a bit hot and be a bit older, but this CPU still has life. Zen is right around the corner, and I expect these old octa-cores to continue to drop in price, becoming a better and better budget CPU option. While the single core performance of Intel is tempting, the simple fact is 8 cores is going to kick some serious ass at DirectX 12 gaming, streaming, and multitasking. You might be better off with the more expensive i5, but for this price, this CPU is really a deal. Its little brother, the FX6300, is also a very good option if you want to save a few bucks, but the extra $15 for two more cores seems worth it to me. On to our motherboard. Let's go with an ASRock 970 Extreme 3. This socket AM3 Plus board from ASRock features a 970 North Bridge and a 950 South Bridge. It works with FX, Phenom 2, Athlon, and Simpron processors. It can handle up to 64 gigs of DDR3 2100 memory and has two PCI Express 16 slots for SLI and five SATA ports. We've got onboard Realtek ALC 892 7.1 surround, four USB 2.0 ports, but only two USB 3.0 ports. One thing I really do like about the Extreme 3 is its power delivery system and the fact we've got five onboard fan connectors. You really cannot have too many fan connectors. It also looks pretty decent, nothing flashy or anything to distract or clash with any certain color scheme. For $48, this was an easy choice to make. Let's toss in two 4 gig sticks of Mushkin Stealth Memory. This DDR3 kit runs at 2133 MHz with a cast latency of 10 and a voltage of 1.6. Has a nice stiletto black heat spreader and is surprisingly fast at this price point. $39 for 8 gigs of gaming glory. That should be plenty for most AAA titles, but if you want to double this gaming PC as a workstation, I'd say double up on the RAM and go for 16 gigs. For storage, I've gone with a SanDisk Z400 128GB 2.5 inch solid state drive. This thing is cheap, fast, and just the thing we need for a Windows boot drive. It delivers a maximum sequential read speed of up to 546 megabytes per second and write speeds of up to 342. It has 8 more gigs of storage than a lot of similarly priced SSDs. SanDisk is also pretty well known and has top-notch manufacturing facilities. On sale for $44.99. 
hurry while you can. Still, any SSD or storage you choose is probably going to be just fine. This is one area of the build you don't need to stress too much about. Now, here things get interesting. As you know, the 1050 and 1050 Ti have hit the shelves, and the budget battle for gaming supremacy rages on. AMD hit hard with the RX 460 and 470, and Nvidia is firing back with the 1050 and 1050 Ti. If we hop on over to Nvidia's website, we can see how the 1050 and 1050 Ti stack up against the legendary 750 Ti, showing nearly double the performance in Overwatch. With an additional 138 cores and a time spy score of 2300, the 1050 Ti's performance falls in neatly between an RX 460 and RX 470. While the 1050 is surprisingly a little lackluster, losing out to the 950 under DirectX 12. Both cards feature NVIDIA's new 4th generation Delta color compression and are built on the new Pascal architecture. As far as choosing your graphics card, you can really choose any brand you prefer. All the current 1050s and 1050 Ti's are pretty solid. I personally have selected the Zotac Mini for a few reasons. First off, avoid the 1050 unless the price drops low enough. The 1050 Ti, however, is very promising. This Zotec is a very tiny card, 5.7 inches in total. The PCB of the 1050 itself is compact and the chip is power efficient. Tacking on a dual slot cooler or a huge fan shroud and heatsink is a little unnecessary and bulky. I really like how Zotac kept it compact and sleek. I've also had a lot of luck overclocking Zotac GPUs in the past. I've got a 750 Ti that simply will not die no matter what horrors or tortures I put it through. This card is also a bit cheaper than the other board partners, coming in around $130. It's very capable for 1080p gaming, but not quite VR ready. It's got 768 CUDA cores with a base clock of 1303 and a boost of 1417 but I'd expect an overclock of around 1450 to 1500, and you will still be within PCIe spec power draws of around 75 watts. We've also got four gigs of a very fast seven gigabytes per second GDR5 memory on a 128 bit bus. Nvidia's compression technology is also currently the best, so it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison against AMD when comparing CUDA cores and bus speed. This model has a max TDP of 75 watts and requires only a 300 watt power supply. Combined with its low price and low power draw, this is the new king of drop-in card conversions. You could very easily scour eBay for a deal on an old HP i5 office PC and toss a 1050 Ti into it for a very low cost gaming rig. I've done this plenty of times and there is no shame in turning an old office workhorse into a console killing PC master race rig. I expect some more price drops from the RX 460 in response to the 1050 and 1050 Ti. So hold tight until Christmas if you want to catch some really crazy deals. Now for the icing on our digital cake, we need a case. You could probably just nail the parts to a wall or duct tape them to your table but your cat might get his tail stuck in your CPU cooler. We don't need that. Let's go with the Corsair Spec 01 Red. Corsair is probably the biggest name in PC parts right now. Power supplies, RAMs, cases, hard drives, whatever they make it, you love it, admit it. I really like this case. It's red, which I'm never mad at, and is roomy and well built. The Corsair name does imply some measure of quality. This ATX mid-tower chassis comes in at 10.5 pounds and measures around 17 by 8 inches. We've got a nice matte black finish, red accents, and a light up red LED intake fan with room for up to 5 more fans in total. Cable routing cutouts and SSD trays are something you normally don't see under $40, but this case has it. It even has a pretty good looking side panel to show off your parts and cable management skills. We've got room for a GPU of up to 420 millimeters in length and lots of drive and storage options with four empty bays. We even have dust filters for the front and PSU intake fans. I wouldn't be surprised if it can somehow make waffles. For $39.99, it's a steal. Case closed. Now, to finish off our budget beast, let's grab a Corsair Builder 500 watt 80 plus bronze certified ATX power supply. 
This thing is a little bit ugly with a red and yellow wiring and no modular cabling, but hey, it's 500 watts, 80 plus bronze certified, and really cheap. It will also match our case perfectly, which is always a bit of a pet peeve of mine. With Corsair, you can nearly do your entire build with one brand. This PCU is also quiet with a silent 120mm fan that will ramp down under low power usage. It also has 500 watts of clean juice with 38 amps on a single 12 volt rail. This is more than adequate for our build and gives us a little bit of upgrade and overclocking room. The CX model sports one of the best efficiency curves I've seen at this price, consistently around 84% under various conditions. With a price tag of $29, this deal won't last. That brings our grand total to just under $450. You can also grab a copy of Windows 10 over at Kingwin for around 30 bucks. This system will surely crush any console and is a great dollar per frame value. Alright, there we go. Another build for under 500 that will keep your frames per second high and your wait times low. Zen is right around the corner and the R9490 and 1080 Ti rumors are beginning. It's almost time for the holidays, and this season is going to be a good one for gaming. Some exciting things are coming down the pipe. Also, I'm getting close to 200 subscribers, and I can't thank all you guys enough for checking out my channel. Happy Halloween. This is Voodoo, signing out. Subscribe for more, stay safe, have fun, and game on, my friends.